I'm sure all of you, if you've been to other churches, and certainly here too, you've heard that phrase, God is good all the time. And so sometimes congregations will respond to the pastor saying, God is good, and they say, all the time, and all the time, God is good. And it's a beautiful, beautiful affirmation of the goodness of God, except at times, right? God doesn't seem good to us. We're, we're haunted by what happened yesterday. We're haunted by other kinds of tragedies that happen. Maybe some of you are going through a loss right now of someone dear to you. Is God good? And it doesn't seem very good to me right now. I got a call out of the blue from a judge in my uh, last congregation in uh, California, in Silicon Valley. And the judge says, we have somebody here that needs to do community service. And we're wondering, could your church be a good place for him? And I said, well, let me meet him. His name is Patrick. Our church had done that before with other people. Um, and so we had a lot of experience with that. We, we help people get better, you know, second chance. His name was Patrick, and Patrick came, and he was 24, and I thought, oh boy, what are we going to do? have Patrick do for us? Well, he turns out to be an IT genius. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us, Patrick. Right away, we all got better on computers. Computers got fixed. He was amazing. But he, the, the next stage for him was a little bit of a challenge. He would come in every day. He had to do, I think, about three months of every day he had to come in. We had a prayer group every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's just what we did. Half hour. You come at 9.30. We leave at 10. And we come in. And we had about 10, 12 people come. And because Patrick was working with us, uh, Patrick had to come to the prayer group. Well, he'd been baptized, but that was about it. His faith had sort of diminished. And the reason that Patrick was, uh, was uh, avoiding Avoiding jail time is he had a hit and run accident. There was not drugs, it wasn't drinking. The problem with Patrick is that he hit a car and then he moved on and that car had damage and he had no insurance. He got petrified and he ran. And he was paying the price for it. And there was a bitterness in his heart about that. And yet as we got to know him and as he got to know the church and as he came to prayer group, you could see some reforming happen in, in his life. You could see he was changing. It's a kind of exciting story. And he got to the point, he said, well, I think I'm going to go to church on Sunday. He about had a heart attack when I heard that, Patrick. You know, He's just so, so young and so new to Christ. But he did. He kept coming. And one day he said to me, Pastor, I, can I ask for a favor? I said, you know, you work so hard for you. I'll do anything you want. And he said, well, I'm a poet. And he said, I go to these writers' workshop in town. And um, we, we find places where we can have these. And I think he wants a writer's workshop in our church. I can't believe he's asking me this. And he said, he said, well, I was thinking about that in the context that I also have another group. It's a hip-hop group. Well, I didn't know a lot about hip-hop at the time. I'm a hip-hop kind of guy, but I didn't know a lot about that, okay? <laughs> and he said, what we do is we scratch records, and we can't find a place to do this. On Friday nights, we go to Safeway parking lot. Safeway in California would be like Smith's or Albertson's parking lot. They close the store. We're out there with our cars. And the police lately have just said, we can't do it anymore. We're wondering, Pastor, could we do our hip hop music in church on Friday nights? I'm pausing. I said, well, I have to talk to the church council. The church council said, well, if you're there, Pastor. And I said, well, I'll be there the first night. But you know, we have to trust that Patrick is going to come through. Well, I was there. It was <laughs> fascinating. The, and, and pretty soon, th those musicians, those hip hoppers, would come to church. And I've never seen them. We have communion, you know, they come for communion. And, and I mean, I, earrings are, are not, that's not new to me, but nose rings and lip rings and eye rings and, and things in the mouth. It was amazing uh, jewelry. Um, and the hair color, purple, was, was average. You know, it was purple and orange and, and every color imaginable coming up. And yet, and yet, they came with such a desire. They came with such hope in their eyes. And I understood then. I, rem I remember Patrick saying, Pastor, hip-hop is not edgy in the sense that it's edgy music you can't understand. It's about a whole culture. It's a culture of freedom. It's a culture of peace. It's a culture of hope and caring. It's a good thing, Pastor. And we were very sad when Patrick finally left. And the last thing he said to me is, as he went out the door, God is good all the time, Pastor. And I said, all the time, God is good. I tell you that story because that's what Reformation is about. That's what Luther found, that God is good all the time.
You remember a little bit of your Luther, how he grew up and he was, he was going to be a lawyer and, and he didn't want to be a lawyer and his father said, you'll be a lawyer and he had all that strife and some of you have had strife in your own family. Your father and mother wants you to go a different direction and he decided, no, he didn't want to do that and he wanted to go, he wanted to learn more about the Lord, he really did. And he finally went to an Augustinian monastery, he became an Augustinian monk and then he couldn't wait to get to Rome. Because in Rome, he would finally see the glory that is Rome, the glory of the papacy, the glory of all those clergy there. And he thought, this is, this is what I want. This is where I'll finally find the goodness of God because he couldn't find it anywhere else. He was so hard on himself and he couldn't find the love of God. And he understood that the way you find God is you do work, you do good things, and then God will like you. Because that's the way it was with his parents and that's the way it was with other people. And he found something extraordinary when he went to Rome. He found the city absolutely deplorable. The depravity of the papacy, the depravity of the priests. The priests, hardly any of them knew the Bible. They just, they came to collect a salary. He couldn't believe it. What is this? What is this church? What's happened? I, I, I want to be a priest in this church. Why, why is this happening? And so he said, I know I need to do some penance to get this out of my mind. And so he decided to climb 28 steps. You can find those steps today in, in Rome. They're called the Scalia Sancta, the sacred steps. And they got there because the crusaders went over to the Holy Land and took the steps from the praetorium where Pontius Pilate was and Jesus walked up those 28 steps to Pontius Pilate who confronted him and basically gave him to the crowds to die. So these steps, and people would, would walk up these steps. No, they would kneel up these steps. They would be on their knees. <laughs> Those of you who have knee surgery, I know you're, oh, 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 oh. 28 steps. And he started to do this on his knees. He was praying, you know, I love you, God. I need you to be good to me. How is it possible that I feel so separate from you? And he got up to, I don't know, the 12th, 13th, 14th step. And he said, I don't have to do this anymore. I don't have to do this. This is not what it's ever been about, what I have to do. It's all about what Christ has done for me. And that set forth the Reformation, that God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. You know, you see that in so many ways. I got a, a beautiful email from the new bishop uh, out in the, the um, Grand Canyon Synod, that's where I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. She's brand new, um, uh, Bishop Deborah, Deborah Wonderful. And she, she said, remind your people on Sunday, Ecclesia, that's church, Semper, always, Reformando, Reformation, Est. Remember, the Reformation is always, the church, the church is reforming always. The church is always trying to get that message out. What is it? God is good all the time, all the time. God is good to all of us. How's it work again, Pastor? What, what, what's that all about again? Re remind me, because I'm losing it already, because I think God is mean all the time, or I think God is distant all the time. I was out in uh, Asilomar, California for a conference and um, uh, Professor James Nastigan, who is one of our professors at Lutheran Seminary at the time in St. Paul, and he was talking about the Ten Commandments and he was talking about forgiveness, talking about all of that. And somebody asked, well, what about, what is, what is heaven? You know, where, where, are, where are we going? How do we get to heaven and all that? You know, we're all clergy. I don't know why we were asking that. We should know that. It's in the heart, right? Well, people asked him and he said, well, let me tell you. My father never believed in Christ and he was on his deathbed and the family we were gathered around my dad He was a farmer had these huge hands and because I'm in the church and because I'm you know a professor of theology and history of the church I get the duty because the family said James James He's got to confess Christ. He can't die without confessing Christ. He won't go to heaven. And he knew that was just absolutely, no, no, no. And he said, James, James, it's up to you. You do it. And he said, all right. So they're gathered. It's kind of the, I think it was the second to the last day of his dad's life. And he takes that, <laughs> that big hand of his dad, just swarms his own little hand comparatively. He said, dad, dad, 
All the people that you love are around you right now. We're in this room with you, Dad. And, and soon, you're going you're gonna to go to a different place, and it's going to be the hand of Jesus. The hand of Jesus is going to come and going to clasp your hand, just like I'm doing, Dad. It's going to be beautiful, and he's going to take you to a new place. And we're all so happy about that. And this dad said, I like that. I like that. And later the family, <laughs> aren't families wonderful? That's not enough. Is that a confession? That's a confession of faith. Yes, yes, yes. He likes it. That's what it's about, dear people. He likes it. He accepts Jesus' hand at the end. How beautiful is that? That's what it's about. And what's it about? God is good. Can God be good in terrible communities like Compton, California? You betcha. That's the hip-hop center of the West, okay? The East is different. The West, Compton, California. You probably saw, saw uh, growing up in Compton. I mean, it's a, a, quite a movie. And that's uh, sort of a hellhole in some ways. But it's, a, and it's an amazing place. And I know you love hip-hop. So, well, out of that, last year at this time, there was a beautiful, beautiful... I think you can, you can come look at that. I think if I put it in the sunlight, sort of. This is Kelly Glow. It's hard to see. I'm sorry. But you can take a look at it when you come up for communion. Kelly Glow. <laughs> She's a hip-hop artist. She grew up in Compton. She came out of Compton, out of that, that same place as Tupac uh, Shakur and Notorious B.I.G. and all these people that you probably know or you've heard about. And she was a singer. And she got out of that hell hole by music and hip hop. She said, that's the culture that saved me. Not, not hurt me, saved me. And I developed these songs out of this. Well, she's been four times or three times at National Youth Gathering. She was there four years ago. People just loved her. And I thought I'd give you a little hip hop today. I know. <clears throat> It's your, oh, finally he's going to do it himself. But I'm going to try, okay? And I'll do it, and then will you join me? And I'll, it, This is the way it's going to go. I'll do it first, and then I'll invite you to stand, and the words will be up there. And we got, the, uh, we got Silas over there in the boom box. Oh, I think we can do it. Okay, we got to give you a, a beat right. first, right? So, the beat box. All right, all right, give us a minute. Okay. All right, I'm going to start. Um, it's, it goes... L-U-H-E-R-A-N, we get baptized and take communion. Saved by grace through faith, yes I am. Proud to say I'm a Lutheran. There you are, people, okay? All right, should I try it? Let's stand, okay? Yeah, thank you for the applause. Let's stand, okay. Here we go. Let we spell out the Lutheran, okay? Heather, I'll let you begin, okay? I gotta do the beatbox. Oh, okay. All right. L U T H E R N. We get baptized and take communion. Saved by grace through faith. Yes, I am. Proud to say I'm a Lutheran. All right. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Thank you. Amen. Amen. But we did it. <laughs> Can you? How much you want to say? Our song of the day is the same love. Wait, I thought that was the song of the day. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think so.